Hello guys, welcome to all of you on my YouTube channel Tariq Swijan. In the last class we have discussed about the political and social situation of England in Victorian age and I told you that how in 1832 the first reform bill was passed in British Parliament and this year marks the beginning of Victorian era. And I also told you that how in 1837 Queen Victoria ascended the rule sorry ascended the throne of england and her rule lasted till 1901 with her death this was the age about which charles dickens has said that it was the best of time and it was the worst of time best of time how because in this age rapid you know passing of reform bills made england more stable and provided more rights to the citizens of england and on the other hand the rapid industrialization slum child labor debts mounting debts these were the reasons due to which this age is called the worst of time also and i talked to you several books that were published in the age and one of the most famous among them is on the origin of species that was published in the year 1859 so today in this class we are going to discuss you know some relevant authors poets of victorian age and i will begin my this lecture with alfred lord tennyson yes i have told you that he is the most representative poet of victorian age and why because of suffering pains and what else the demand for education to women these all things were depicted by tennyson in his poetry whether he is writing in memoriam w h h sorry in memoriam a h h which was written on the death of his friend arthur hallam or the poem the princess amadly which talks basically about uh, the education of women in victorian society all these poems you know embarked a journey a journey which has many thing to tell and you know alfred tennyson is the poet which is called airy fairy poet what is called he is called airy fairy poet sometimes if you are asked any question like this that who is the author that is called airy fairy poet so he is a uh, alfred tennyson because in one of his poems he starts this line airy fairy like this but now this very word is used as a slang so alfred tennyson when he started writing poems then he was accompanied by his brothers too and it will be interesting to know that first of his publication which was not signed by tennyson was published by the name of his brothers you know the title of the this title of this collection was something like brothers and tennyson was one among several child of his uh, father and his first education was provided by his uh, father later he entered into the university where he won the chancellor's medal for his famous poem timbuktu what's the name of the poem timbuktu was the poem for he won the chancellor's medal in university alfred tennyson became very sad on the death of his friend arthur hallam whom he met in university and later due to the you know the revolution thought revolutionary thoughts of byron means byron through his works inspired them a lot whom alfred tennyson and his friend arthur hallam and both escaped to a foreign country to become a part of revolutionary forces but it was a time when his friend arthur hallam died and you know arthur hallam had engaged also with his sister and later they had planned that they are going to marry with each other but this was a time when arthur hallam died and this death the death of his friend marked a deep sorrow on the life of alfred tennyson that's why in one of his famous lyric that is called poignant lyric 
poignant lyric and what is the name of the lyric break 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 he sing the you know uh, waves in seashore sorry in seashore and there he is you know memorizing his friendship with arthur hallam and he calls the ships that are going in the sea he calls them majestic why because these ships have the ability to return but his friend arthur hallam is no longer present in this world he has passed away and this makes tennyson more sad his famous poems whether he is you know tears idle tears the lady of salot maud and what else the lotus eaters and one of the most famous poems which is that is ulysses embarks you know reveals the spirit of the age when ulysses in his famous poem by the name of ulysses says that this is a time that he cannot stop from his journey he will finally to strive to seek and not to yield and this was the spirit of victorian people in england too that they wanted to acquire knowledge beyond any limit ulysses is representing the temperament of victorian people they did not want themselves to make confined in any limit and ulysses becomes an embodiment who says that i will drink life to the lees remember the lines i will drink life to the lees this is the spirit of ulysses and in his other poem that's name as the lotus eaters he talks about the journey of ulysses who is returning from the war of troy you know achilles you know achilles tempted him or we can say achilles made him leave the place achilles said ulysses that i know that what will be the outcome of this war and i don't want you to die if you remain alive we are not going to die and die how die metaphorically because ulysses is the person who is going to narrate the adventures heroic deeds of achilles achilles who according to ulysses has now gone to happy island happy island yes happy island is the place where it was the belief of greek that the mortals sorry the you know famous warriors of that time used to go after their death means their soul has an accommodation at that place so alfred tennyson let's come to his biography and see that what were the major contribution of alfred tennyson of in sorry in english literature so see here alfred tennyson he was born in 1809 and no he died in 1892 alfred tennyson succeeded wordsworth succeeded wordsworth as poet laureate as a poet laureate and he was a well deserved person personality for this age and you know he served this position till his death in 1892 means uh, approximately 42 years he was on the post of poet laureate too and that's why queen victoria loved him a lot when she read his book in memoriam a h h then you know she became overjoyed and said that next to bible in memoriam is my comfort so this was the creativity of alfred tennyson that make him that made him apple of queen victoria's eye so see here he was one of the 12 children means how many there were 12 sister and brothers of the reverend george clayton tennyson reverend 
George Clayton Tennyson. His yeah, father's name was Reverend George Clayton Tennyson, and his mother's name was Elizabeth Fice. Elizabeth Fice. His mother's name was Elizabeth Fice. For 66 years, from the appearance of the poems of two brothers in 1927 until his death in 1892. Sorry, this is 1892. Sorry, 1827. 1827 until his death in 1892 he studied and practiced his art continually and that that his first publication was uh, the poems of two brothers in 1827 as i have already told you that tension started writing poetry with his uh, brothers and together he and his brothers you know made the first publication that appeared in 1827 1827 by the name of poems of two brothers in 1827 but remember that this was not the collection where you know tension had made his sign so literally we can say that this was not his first collection too and I will tell you which was his first collection in later, sorry, later in this video, until his death in 1892. He studied and practiced art continually, practiced his art continually in 1822. In 1822, he entered, he entered Trinity College, Cambridge. Means this was the university where he got his uh, education and this was the place uh, where he met his friend Arthur Hallam too, where he became the center of a brilliant circle, center of a brilliant circle of friends, chief of whom was the young poet Arthur Henry Hallam, chief of whom was the young poet Arthur Henry Hallam. So that's why sometimes his poem, Break, 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 also is called a kind of pastoral elegy. Not Break, 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 Balki, in memoriam. But as it does not qualify the characteristic, the all characteristics of a pastoral elegy, so we do not consider it as a pastoral elegy. But if in any exam it has been given, an option then you can mark it also but if the other three are not a pastoral elegy remember it must not be adonis it must not be tharesis or any other that i have told you but if in memoriam is an option then you can mark it as a pastoral elegy helm in university he won a chancellor's medal he won a Chancellor's Medal for the poem Timbuktu. Remember the poem? What was the name of the poem? It is Timbuktu. His first signed work is chiefly lyrical that appeared in the year 1830. So this is his first signed work whose name is chiefly lyrical that appeared in 1830. Tennyson and his friend inspired by Byron. No, I have told you that who inspired them? inspired they were inspired by byron byron the famous romantic poet slay sorry sailed away to spain they went to spain and they had an idea in their mind that they will join the army of insurgents insurgents means you know they were becoming like a terrorist also the army of insurgents against king ferdinand you know lord byron revolutionized their thinking in such a way that they you know wanted to become an insurgent too and they were against Ferdinand King Ferdinand in 1831 Tennyson left the university without taking a degree Tennyson left this university and some among these sorry among the reasons were that his father was a very poor person and he could not afford Tennyson's study in this university. That's why Tennyson left the place. His friend Hallam died in 1833. Remember the date that Hallam died in 1833 and due to it, 
Due to it, the poet was plunged into a period of gloom and sorrow. Period of gloom and sorrow in the words of William J. Long. What is the opinion of William J. Long about him? Tennyson is probably the most representative literary man of Victorian era. Tennyson is the most representative literary man of Victorian era and why? I have told you already that the characteristic of Victorian age are represented by Tennyson chiefly in his uh, poetry. See what else it says here. He is as good a representative and chronicler of uh, his age as Chaucer, Spencer and Pope were of their own uh, respective ages. Means Tennyson has been you know compared with uh, Chaucer, Spencer and Pope. Arthur Henry, Henry Hallam was his closest friend who dies in the loss, who dies in 1833. The loss made a deep emotional impact on Tennyson, who went to write an elegy in memoriam that was published in the year 1850. And this was the year when he was made Poet Laureate of England too. He succeeded Wordsworth as Poet Laureate in 1850. He is basically famous for his political works. So see, these are his famous poems. First of all, The Princess Amadley, 1847. This is the poem that talks about the university education of women. Because at that time, women were not allowed to enter the university for their higher education. That's why we see that the novelists like Jane Austen and others did not achieve the you know higher education in their life but here in his poem the princess a madly tension portrayed that there is a group of women or we can say that the princess who have made their own university you have not allowed them to enter so now they have opened their own university so what is it it is important because it deals with the contemporary issues of female education in Tennyson's view, higher education was likely to kill the essential feminism of women. Means unless they are not going to get higher education, they will die. They will suffer the, you know, pangs of this society which is always, you know, patriarchal in its sense. So they had to leave their essential feminism. They did not have to, you know, live now like a humble, meek, generous creature. So they can now take action if they have the better education. So he has been written, it has been written in blank verse and consists of 3000 lines. So see the length of the poem and how much Tennyson, you know, gave lines in this poem. He has written this poem in 3000 lines. And next is In Memoriam A.H.H. A.H.H. stands for Arthur Henry Hallam. Arthur Henry Hallam. It is dedicated to his friend A.H. Hallam, written on the death of his friend A.H. Hallam. It is superfluous. Okay. Hallam. Or kya hai? About this queen book, Queen Victoria remarked that next to Bible, in memoriam is my comfort. I have told you already this. And his another poem, Maud, 1855. It is a kind of monodrama. Mono means single. Monodrama means single utterance of a person. The entire poem is presented in the form of a soliloquies. Soliloquies is made of two words, solo means single. And another is eloquence. And there is a eloquence means utterance. So, is to reveal the con condition of the speaker's mind. This was Tennyson's favorite. So, this poem was uh, Tennyson's favorite. If someone, you know, asks a question that which poem is Tennyson's favorite, then the answer is uh, it is Maud. The Idols of the King. Yes, published in 1859 in the same year when Darwin published his book, uh, origin of species it is an allegory dealing with arthurian legends and holy grail myth arthurian legends and holy grail myth this is the myth that you will counter that will you will counter 
in the poem the wasteland 2 its general subject is the celtic legends of king arthur you know, celtic legends of king arthur and his knights of round table knights of round table the chief source of this book is thomas mallory's mortady arthur mortady arthur remember this that the main source of this book idols of the king is uh, thomas mallory's mortady arthur Her, his other poems are other important poems at a glance the first is the lotus eaters the lotus eaters recount the story of you know it uh, recounts the story of who is story when ulysses is returning from troy achilles says him even he compels him, you know to uh, ulysses that i know the results of this war you will have to leave this leave this uh, place and now after spending you know approximately 20 years how much 20 years after spending you know he is now returning to his island that his name is ithaca his name is ithaca island and ulysses is the king of this island but while returning they abode on an island and you know they eat something there and felt unconscious and fell unconscious there the lotus eaters is the name of that island so now and the poem ulysses and after you know spending some days and recovering the lo on lotus eaters ulysses now comes to you know where his own island whose name is uh, ithaca he says here there's his wife penelope what's the name of his wife penelope and his son telemachus telemachus he says the beginning line of this poem is it little profits that an idol king still remains to this heart means it doesn't matter now it has no relevance relevance that a uh, you know warrior like me must return to this place i do not want to rule on these people sir who hoard and sleeps and know not me he calls his wife old why ulysses also has become old you know it has been 20 years when he went when he left that place and he is now saying his wife old because you know why because her mentality her you know her thinking doesn't match with ulysses that's why he calls her an old woman finally he invokes his peers who were with him in the wars he says that don't we must not you know spend time here we will sail and you know we want if we die then we must die in a heroic manner to strive to seek to find and not to yield these were the spirits of ulysses that he placed in his famous poem ulysses so that there are many things that i want to emphasize with you but i will deal these things in poem and very soon i am about to teach all these poems to you ulysses tythonus break 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 this is the introductory poem of you know in memoriam tears idle tears the lady of salos these are the very famous poems of tension palace of art a dream of fair women the miller's daughter the miller's daughter the defense of lucknow the defense of lucknow the charge of the light brigade etc these are his uh, you know often read poems and are very famous uh, too now we have the most optimistic author of this age and who he is uh, he is robert browning robert browning who is famous for his why he is famous for his uh, dramatic monologues dramatic monologues what is a dramatic monologue dramatic monologue is a kind of poem where we have a single speaker you know mono means single and log means speaker 
so this is a kind of poem where we get a you know a speaker who is single a single speaker and there is remember the these words there is a, at least one or more than one listener at least one or more than one listener l i s t e n e r but this listener is silent in the entire poem he silent in entire poem and the presence of this listener can be felt only through the question and answers of this speaker right so these are the characteristic of a dramatic monologue this is a kind of objective poetry remember the uh, objective poetry and the speaker is also often unknown right so the speaker of the poem also is often uh, unknown so let's see he was born in where camberwell in a businessman family and this was the reason of his optimism he was optimistic because you know he never suffered in his life he was he belonged to a very you know rich family and that's why he never suffered and he has no any sorrow in his life he was a poet of optimism unlike to tennyson matthew arnold and hardy he is called the poet of dramatic monologues his wife elizabeth barrett browning was also a famous poetess elizabeth barrett browning and he has written a very famous poem prospike prospike on her death his famous poems are so let's see his poems first of all there is andrea del sarto andrea del sarto is based on a painter who belongs fartless not printer he is a, a painter andrea del sarto belongs to the renaissance period and he claims himself that he worked in the court of french king francis french king francis and he has a wife whose name is lucrezia remember the name lucrezia is there also and in one of his other poems where my last that is also there is a girl whose name is lucrezia so andrea's wife name is lucrezia and andrea worked in the court of you know french king francis he says that he has been a faultless painter faultless painter but he could not become a renowned and famous painter why because he had a nagging wife whose name is lucrezia he compares himself to raphael and michael angelo and says that i was not lesser than to them in any means i also could have become prosperous i also could have become famous similar to them but they did not have a nagging wife like me and i you know caught such kind of you know suffering in my life because of this woman he tells that my wife is in a relationship with his with, with her cousin he is sitting at a place and thinking about his past that you know the king francis gave him some money and this painter had promised that i will return your money in a sorry some day but due to his wife and the lover of his wife he was unable to pay him back and that's why he never returned to that country and his wife loves her cousin and you know what is more painful that the person her cousin is in debts and this lady wants andrea's earnings to spend in his sorry in his debts finally in the poem andrea is sitting and his wife is also there and his wife has been called by you know her lover is calling her and andrea says her to go he gives her some money and says that you go with him i will you know spend i will pay her debts by selling my all paintings 
So this was a kind of optimism that was presented by Robert Browning in his poems that there is a person whose wife is now going up, going away with him, going away from him. Sorry, but still he is hopeful. Still he is optimistic. So see here, Andrea claims himself a parchment painter. He is the painter who has worked in the court of King Francis I of France. He is married to a girl named Lucrezia. Francis had given him the money and he had promised to return it. He compared himself with Renaissance painters Raphael and Michelangelo. Remember these names, sir? They became more successful because they did not have a nagging wife like Lucrezia. She is in love with her cousin who is in debts. Her lover is calling her and Andrea allows her to go with him. He promises to pay his debts by selling his all paintings. So this is the poem Andrea del Sarto and another is the last ride together. The last ride together recounts a story where there's a person whose beloved is now leaving him and going somewhere else. And this person has nothing, any complaint, no any complaint, but last wish. And what is that last wish? Sir? He says to her that, okay, you can go. You can go and leave this place. But my final request is that you must ride with me finally. Okay. Ek bar bas, mere saath tum riding kar lo. And the lover, the beloved of this person, you know, uh, वो क्या करती है अपनी आंखें झुका लेती है शर्म से और ये उसको समझता है कि दिस इज द इंडिकेशन ऑफ ठीक है अफॉर्मेशन और वो दोनों यात्रा शुरू कर देते हैं घोड़े पर बैठ के देखिए द लवर इन द पोएम रिक्वेस्ट हर बिलवेड टू राइड लास्ट टाइम विद हिम सी एक्सेप्ट विद विद डिग्निटी एंड सिग्नल विद हर फेस इट मेक्स हिम मोशनलेस ही कंपेयर हिमसेल्फ विद मेनी पर्सन वो कहता है कि राजा जो चले जाते हैं उनका भी ऐसे हो जाता है अंत सैनिकों क्या मिलता है okay. मंत्रियों को ठीक है इनको मतलब पॉलिटिशियंस राजनेताओं को क्या मिलता है पोएट्स भी जो होते हैं एक टाइम आता है कि उनका टेस्ट लोगों का टेस्ट बदल जाता है और वे कुछ और पढ़ने लगते हैं कम से कम मेरे पास तुम तो हो और आखिरी जो है विश्व के लिए मेरे अग्री तो कर रही हो और जो है कंसिडर सिंसल फॉर्चुनेट इन कंपेरिजन टू देम यानी उन लोगों से अपने आप को ज्यादा फॉर्चुनेट वो मानता है ही वॉन्ट दिस राइट टू बिकम इमर्टल चाहता है दैट दिस राइड मे बिकम इमर्टल सो दैट ही कुड यू नो हैव नो रेट एनी रेग्रेट ऑफ हर डिपार्चर हिस अनदर पोएम प्रोफीरियास लव इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पोएम एंड व्हाई देयर इज अ यंग मैन हुज नेम इज प्रोफीरिया एंड ही हैज अ यू नो हियर हर सॉरी हिज बिलवेड ही हैज हिज बिलवेड हु हैड गॉन टू एनी पार्टी प्लेस एंड नाउ सी हैज returned from that place and prophiria is waiting for her he sees her very beautiful you know that she is very beautiful and she was a very modest lady she wants to talk to him but he is lost in his thoughts he is uh, lost in his thoughts uh, and when she compels him to talk to him and he wants this moment uh, immortal and how he makes uh, you know he catches his hair and to his sorry her hair so you know strangles her you know neck and she dies of it and she thinks he plays with her dead body he opens her eyes you know he he, he, he touches her hair and cheeks and says yes this moment has now become immortal see here the speaker lives in a cottage in the countryside gaon mein his lover a blooming young woman named prophiria named prophiria comes in out of a storm and proceeds to make a fire and bring cheer to the cottage cheer to the cottage sorry uh, the lady's name is prophiria the person who is his lover has no any name in this poem okay so uh, uh, correct it she embraces the speaker Simbrace the speaker, offering him her bare shoulder. Offering him a bare spear, sorry, bare shoulder. He tells us that he does not speak to her. 
it does not speak to her he wraps her hair around her neck and strangles her strangles her he then twice his place with her cops uski dead body ke sath mein opening the eyes and propping the body up against his uh, side and in this way he makes his you know this moment uh, immortal he sits with her body this way the entire night he is there the entire night uh, the speaker remarking that god had sorry god has not yet moved to punish uh, him he says that god is perhaps uh, not seeing that's why he has not moved to punish him for his this uh, sin and now one of the most famous dramatic monologues of browning is there my last duchess yes the famous poem that is my last duchess painted on the wall looking as if she were alive looking as if she were alive and i call that piece of wonder now fra pandolf's hands work busily a day and there she stands there's a person and possibly this poem is modeled after the italian duke and what is the name of this duke it is uh, alfonso di cost and who is the duke of ferrara in italy he is talking to a negotiator who has come there with a marriage proposal of his chief's wife sorry chief's daughter and duke who you know proclaiming him himself that is a patron of art telling himself telling him about many things about his life that this see this this is you know the reputation this is the you know uh, fame of my uh, my you know uh, reign this is the fame of my dynasty everything he tells that yes i did this or that i was you know married to a girl whose name was uh, lucrezia lucrezia was his uh, wife and he tells them sorry him that uh, she smiled whenever i passed uh, to her but who passed without the same smile this grew and i gave commands and all smile stopped together and there she stands as if she were alive means duke is indicating that the woman for whose marriage proposal the negotiator has come must have to follow the norms of his family and what is the reality of his family and the duke that duke is an arrogant person he wants his wife to be confined in home and she should not talk to anybody because it was against his you know tenacity he steals a name fra pandolf he says in the beginning lines na fra pandolf's hands worked busily at day and there she stands he is telling this name deliberately that the person who actually saw the face of his wife must not be you know must not be known to anyone otherwise people will know about his wife and ask him that how duke's wife look like so see the poem the poem is based on italian duke duke of ferrara who is more interested in dowry than the love of a wife he considers himself a patron of art in renaissance italy he is possible model possibly modeled after the fifth duke of ferrara alfonso the east alfonso alfonso second the east he deliberately takes the name of fra pandolf the painter three times remember how many times three times in the poem so that he could conceal the fact that who really saw his uh, dead wife lucrezia finally in the poem okay remember the name lucrezia in the poem he indicates towards a neptune god sculpture remember this that a neptune god sculpture which was made by claus of innsbruck in a bronze and his another poem rabi ben isra rabi ben isra okay the poem is narrated by rabi ben isra okay a real 12th century scholar 12th century scholar 
the piece does not have a clearly identified audience or dramatic situation the rabbi begs his audience to okay this is a very famous line grow old along with me grow old with her along with me the best is yet to be means rabbi ben isra has the opinion that the best time of a human being's life is not his youth but it is you know when he is uh, becoming old because all the experience of life uh, come to him only in his older age <coughs> his status that age is where the best of life is uh, realized uh, whereas youth shows but half youth shows but uh, half in line 6 he acknowledges that youth lacks insight into life since it is you know characteristically so concerned with the living in the moment that it is unable to consider the deeper questions so these are the thoughts of rabbi ben isra and this poem the bishop orders his tomb at st praxed just also famous dramatic monologue and this represents a you know arrogant bishop who was very really corrupt also till he was alive he hoarded a lot and now he is you know about to die and he has four sons and he calls them and he says that when i am no longer okay yeah, when i am no longer alive means when i am dead you have to build my tomb with precious stones you have to use lapis lazuli in the grave and why because he had a competitor when he was alive and his name is gandalf 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 had died prior to him and sent sorry the bishop orders his children that you have to use this and this in my grave so that i could tease gandalf who is a you know lying beside me in the grave you have to establish the portraits of beautiful girls in my tomb see the hypocrisy of a priest he was a bishop and says that you have to you know uh, you have to portray the famous paintings the famous girls painting in the walls of my tomb and what else the speaker here is a corrupt old italian renaissance bishop this is also the characteristic of robert browning sir you know dramatic monologues that he always you know writes about uh, who's uh, he writes about italian you know characters in his poems bishop who on his death bed can think only about the lavish tomb he wants his uh, many illustrate sons to build for him you know they are all they, uh, the sons of bishop are illustrate means he was very you know lavish he has lived a very lavish life having spent his life seeking status wealth and power he can't face the fact that he will lose them all in death means he could not believe that whatever i am earning i am earning status i am earning wealth and i am earning power all three things all these things sir you know will no longer with me when i am going to die his obsession with his tombs design is only a cover for his terror of decay and his own empty soul you know this kind of symbolism he wants to what you know these gandalf who cheated him and occupied the best burial place in a graveyard okay so this was about the robert browning's poems he has written many other poems also that his famous other famous poems are prospike prospike that was written on the death of his wife elizabeth barrett browning elizabeth barrett browning and prospike has been written in a martial rhythm martial rhythm and prospike the meaning of prospike is to look forward to look forward so all these the characteristic uh, uh, you know make robert browning's dramatic monologues a famous poetry you know of, uh, we can say the concept the phenomena of poetry in victorian is 
all other poets of Victorian as you know very pessimistic but Robert Browning you know gives a very optimistic touch in his uh, poems I will tell you other names of Robert Browning's poem tomorrow in my class so this was all you know this was all today about Alfred Tennyson and Robert Browning so we will meet in my next class and I will include some other authors of Romantic Ace and they are Matthew Arnold, Dickens and some other authors too. So see you tomorrow in my upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching. Did you like this video or not? Please, you know, uh, intimate me with your like and comments. Thank you so much. Have a good day.